everybody and welcome to my channel. So in order to classify this video and to make it easy for you to understand, I'm going to first describe what is a trust grade job and what is a training job. Then I'm going to talk about how to get a trust grade job and how do you get a training post. And then finally, we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of each of these entities. Um, so let's get started. The first thing that you need to know that is trust grade is basically a term known for non-training jobs. And the reason it's called a trust grade job is because each trust is locally employing doctors to work in their hospital. So this is not a national level recruitment. For a trust grade job, you will be working in a single trust. A trust can have more than one hospital in them. And if one trust is only employing people for one hospital, then you'll just work in that particular hospital, if that makes sense. So the definition for a trust grade job is basically a non-training post here in the UK. While a training post, which is quite self-explanatory, is a training post. And... Um, I don't know how to best describe this further, but it's a training post. You'll be in training. Let's get into the fact, how do you get into both of these jobs? All right, so for a trust grade, as I said, a locally employed doctor means that they're going to go through the interview process, which is going to be run by a single trust. And usually it's even sometimes just one consultant. There's no panel. There's no previous exams. Um, there's nothing. All you need to do is apply through the NSS jobs website or the track jobs website to all the jobs that you want to apply for then you get shortlisted and then you are invited for an interview once you take the interview then the trust is solely responsible to make the decision to hire you for people who are international medical graduates if you want to come through this route you still have to have the plav exam you still have to have the gmc registration all of that needs to be done before you are able to apply for these kind of jobs for people who are British graduates or have done their F1 and F2, this is a common type of post which is now being sought after by all the foundation doctors um, because they all want to do an F3 post. An F3 post basically is a trust grade level post. And for that, you need to apply through NHS jobs or track jobs. And then again, as I said, you will be shortlisted and you will have to go through an interview. And then the doctor taking your interview is the one making the decision. There is no panel, there is no national level, anything. It's just a locally employed service that a trust does to fill out gaps. While a training post, as if you have not watched my video, I have several videos guiding on what a training post is, how do you get a training number? Because it's very hard to get, it's one of the most difficult things you will be struggling for until you actually get in and once you get in the struggle does not end there so a training post is basically a job where you are going to be hired by the higher educational england hee or now it's been termed as nhsc um so basically you're going to be hired by a national level recruitment service for that you need to make an oriel account if you're applying for anesthetics or any of the other specialties that i've mentioned before on my videos i will link them all down below and in the cards above you can watch them um so you have to take a separate exam this is after you've already have gmc registration or after you've done a crest form signing or after you've got a foundation form signing so basically a training post is something you cannot apply for unless you've had Either UK Foundation program signing off or a crest form signing off. And after that, you will make your account on Oriel. Then you will appear in the MSRA exam. Then you'll go for an interview process. And this interview process is going to have multiple examiners. Sometimes more than four people are there. It's a panel and there is a layman person during the interview as well. Um, I've got guidelines regarding the interview process as well. So you can go watch those videos. But essentially, a training post requires a considerable amount of effort, not only as the fact of the MSRA or your interview, but also your portfolio. And I know there are a lot of questions regarding portfolios as well. So I will be making a separate video for that. But this is a long process, it's the long run, and you are going to get a training level job only if you go through all of these hoops. So obviously, if you compare both of them, it is a very, very big difference on how you get a trust grade post and how you get a national level post. Also, for a national level training number post, there is this considerable amount of competition and there is less number of seats. While for a trust grade post, you are applying through the NHS jobs and TREX jobs and there's a plethora of jobs out there and you can choose which department you want to go to and you can rotate and you can, you know, basically so many things you can do. Trust grade post is a freedom post. Training post is, 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 um, it's something. 
and we're gonna talk about it in the next section. Right, so regarding pros and cons, there are obviously pros and cons of both things and it's not a sort of a deal breaker. Any of these pros and cons are not deal breakers because at the end of the day, you have your personal life to think about. You have so many other things that are going on in your life. Being a doctor is not the only thing that you're doing, I hope. You have other things happening in your life. So for that reason, we're gonna talk about basically what a trust grade job offers, what a tra training number post offers, and you can decide whether it's a pro or a con. I am not going to justify whether it's a pro or a con for me, because obviously now I'm in a training post. So maybe it will sound biased, if I start saying things like this is a pro for me or this is a con for me, but I'm going to state out the facts of both of these jobs and their differences and you can decide depending on your own circumstances whether this is a pro or a con for you, whether it's a deal breaker or not, and so that you are able to make your decision in a very informed manner. Right, as I said, the trust trade post is a locally employed post. That means that your sole responsible is your hospital, the HR system of this one particular hospital, uh, which is a really good thing in terms of the fact that if you're coming new to the country it is easier for you to kind of understand the nhs they will do a shadowing period for you in a training post you will not be having any shadowing period so say for example if you start your nhs journey directly in a training number you will not be having any shadowing period um but in a trust rate post either you're shadowing somebody or they give you like a two week notice where you're working and you're just following somebody around, but they will sort of guide you into the process, sort of guide, make you adjust with the system in the NHS. And a training post that does not happen, first day you're on job, there is no like, oh, let me teach you how to get into the NHS or let me set you in, that does not happen in a training post. The next thing is when you're in a trust grade job, you do not rotate out of that hospital. That means you're not going to be rotating within different cities or counties or I don't know, like all of that stuff does not happen in a trust rate job. I know some trusts are basically running three hospitals at one time. So you may sometimes work at one side or another side, but they're all actually pretty close to each other. It's not like you have to travel an hour for one and an hour for another, which obviously in training posts, if you have seen my previous horror stories of moving, um, you have to move every three or six months depending on your training job and it, it's always always in a different place it's not going to be in the same place sometimes you're lucky to have one whole year run in one particular hospital but as you're employed by the national um service they're gonna be putting you into a deanery based hospital not a trust grade hospital so basically a deanery means each deanery can have more than six or seven hospital sites and by six or seven hospital site, it means that each hospital is not going to be in the same city or county or town. So you might have to kind of keep going around and around. There are some deaneries who may have as well as 12 hospitals. So if you are in one of those sad, sad deaneries, then you're going to be literally rotating your entire career, which is seven to eight years of training, if you are doing a seven to eight year training program. Depending on the side of the hospital, if you're working in a DGH as a trust grade, it's like a family based thing. Everybody is super nice to you, everybody knows you, you can have as many swaps as you want for your shifts, you can travel as many times as you want depending on the number of annual leaves you have. Because you know everybody, you can swap your shifts with people, it's easier for you to work around your rota if your rota coordinator is good. However, in a training post, you will have to get a rota every, like the whole six months you get a rota, then you have to swap from people you don't really know. And again, because you're going to a new site and a new hospital, lots of people are not going to know you. So it, it just becomes a bit hard. Career progression wise. So basically a trust grade post is a stagnant post. You are going to be in one department. If you don't move from that one department, you're probably going to be there for the rest of your life if you don't apply for another job. So say for example, if you're doing acute med, you might rotate in different departments in the acute medicine, you know, specialty, but it's going to be the same. It, there's no difference and you're not going to be progressing so there is no like trust grade one trust grade two trust grade three no it's just trust grade it's just sho level post there is no progression you are not given anything at all in terms of career progression so yes you are allowed to attend conferences you can take exams if you want you can uh, upskill yourself you can become a more senior person but your grade is going to remain trust grade your name is going to be an sho there is not going to be a career jump there's not going to be a sort of increment with it your salary if you stay with one trust for a year they do give some increment but it's not like when you go from ct1 to ct3 you suddenly become a reg or from ct3 to sc5 you, again you become a senior specialty registrar all of that stuff never happens in a trust report regardless 
even if you've been working in that post for seven years, you are still going to be at the same level, at the same grade, at the same everything. Nobody cares about the number of years you've put in as a trust rate. Whereas obviously if you're doing a training post, each year you're progressing, each year your grade changes, each year your salary might not change, but your experience changes, the level of decision making changes, your exposure changes, and you are definitely having so much more support when you're trying to progress in your career because actually you are being paid by the national level recruitment service to eventually become a consultant. Whereas as a trust rate, that will never happen, no matter even if you work 10 years in one department, in one specialty, and you have everything, you have all the exams, all the equipment, everything like everything is sorted, you'll still remain a trust rate. You will not be becoming a consultant, you will not be becoming a registrar. If you started as an SHO, you'll remain as an SHO. If you started as a registrar, as a trust rate, you'll remain as a trust rate registrar. So that is never going to change. As a trust rate, you can get a study budget, but it's not as much as you will get as a trainee. I mean, in my previous trust, they were super nice. So you had a study budget. Not all trusts are going to provide trust grades with a study budget. By study budget, I mean you can use that money to take exams or take courses or go attend conferences, that kind of stuff. Um, for trainees, you can't take exams with that money, but you can go and take courses to appear for those exams. You can take travel expenses. For trust rate, you do not get travel expenses. Um, but for a uh, trainee, you get travel expenses. If you want to attend courses, conferences, all of that stuff is covered by your study budget. And obviously it gets approved pretty quickly because you are a trainee and that's part of your training. So you have much more support in terms of your career progression. As a trust grade, you do not get an educational supervisor. If you are lucky enough and your department is super, super into uh, the whole uh, academic side of things, they might give you a clinical supervisor, might. That is not a short shot confirmation. But as a trainee, not only do you get a clinical supervisor, but you also get an educational supervisor. A clinical provider is somebody who's going to be obviously closely working with you, whichever department you're working in. And an educational supervisor is going to be looking at your overall career progression for the amount of period your training period is going to last. So for example, for anesthetics, it's three to four years. And I have different clinical supervisors in every department that I rotate into, but the educational supervisor is going to remain same for the whole four years of my training period as a core trainee. As a trust rate, you might try to get things signed off. If you don't know what the crest form is, I'll talk about it further because I've been getting so many questions regarding the crest form thing. But if you are one of those people, it's pretty hard to get a crest form signed off. Why? Because a lot of consultants are not going to be able to sort of just sign you off so that you can apply for training. While in a training post, whatever you do, you can get easily signed off because you have a training portfolio and people are aware that you're a trainee. So they are obligated to sign you off if you've done something. This is kind of difficult for a trust grade because nobody really cares about you as a trust grade. You are just somebody who's going to fill the rotor gaps. So when you ask them for a sign off, people are going to be like a bit, mm, shall I do this or not? But for a trainee, obviously, if I'm doing a procedure, it is because I need a sign off. I need a DOPS or an SLE, all of that stuff. And therefore, they are obligated to sign me off. And I have online platforms, which are easier for me to access as a trainee. And I can get signed off easily. So my career progression, not only in terms of years, is easier. But in terms of gaining the evidence of my career progression, again, is easier. With regards to GMC, they don't really care what you're doing, but you're going to have annual sort of report systems. And both of these are separate for a trust grade and a training post. For a trust grade post, you have an appraisal every year, which is again done locally by your whoever is your supervisor, and they're just going to sign you off and it's going to be a chilled appraisal. If you've done everything in your appraisal, they're going to be fine with you. There is no MSFs, there's no MTRs, there is no FEGs. There is nothing extra fancy about your appraisal as long as your department is happy with you and you've done a considerable amount of work. This includes audits, QIP, CBDs and all that stuff. They are going to be fine with you. There's no panel that sits to sign you off your appraisal as a trust grade. For a trainee, however, there is something called an ARCP, which is an annual panel where several people sit down and look at your annual sort of progression. Um, and there's a lot of admin work regarding this thing. I'm quite salty right now talking about the ARCP because of an incident that has happened to me and I will be making a separate video about that. But um, because there is a panel that sits, there's a lot of scrutiny to, to a trainee, like what they've done in the entire year. And there's a lot of extra admin forms that make absolutely no sense. 
but you have to do those forms and then they will decide at the end of the year whether you get to progress to the next stage of your training which is going to be CT2, CT3 and so on and so forth. However, as a trust grade, as I mentioned, nobody really cares about it. So you're going to get your appraisal done and all it's doing is a tick book exercise for GMC to show that you have continued learning. But for a trainee, it's not just for the GMC to basically show that you've done continued learning, but it is also for the fact that you can now progress to the next stage of your training. If you say, for example, fail your ARCP, then not only do they have the power to extend your training period, meaning that the seven years can become eight years, but they can also fail you, kick you out of training programs, and maybe halt your training and tell you to take some time off training and then come back into training. So a trust grade appraisal is considerably less stressful than a trainee ARCP, which pretty much is doing the same thing for GMC, but in terms of a training progression, it is definitely much, much harder and very, very stressful. So yeah, this sums up the video. I don't have talked a lot in this video. If you need any help and you feel like this is a very confusing video or all of that stuff, just comment down below or send me Instagram messages. I do respond there as well. I know this is very overwhelming, especially if you're coming from another country to try to settle into the NHS. If you found this video helpful, please give the video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.